Hello and great to have you back in the third lesson on waves and by the end of this lesson we'll get really good at one how you can graph waves two interpretation of y versus x graph and y versus t graphs and three how do you find the equation of a wave moving in negative x direction so see this rope undergoing wave motion let's go ahead and freeze it at some time t so what we get is a snapshot of the shape of the string at that instant and mathematically speaking what we are seeing is the y position of various particles of the string at that time t that is when we have just stopped or frozen the wave so let's try to plot the y values for various points on the wave that is points that lie on the x axis say at time t equal to 0 and well if you put t equal to 0 in this equation the equation you get between y and x is this y for various x values at time t equal to 0 is equal to a cos kx and let us go ahead and assume here the value of a is equal to one unit well it could be anything centimeters meters whatever and lambda is assumed equal to five units you've taken some arbitrary number so let us put various x values in this equation and see what are the y values we get so in the interest of time i have calculated these values in an excel sheet and this is what I got. So you can see that for various x values in this column, if you put these x values in this equation, these are the corresponding y values you'll get. And if you make a plot of y versus x, this is what you will get. So you can see the y position of various points at time t equal to zero. So at x equal to zero, you can see y is equal to one, which is the amplitude also and at x equal to 0.5 y is about 0.8 or rather more accurately it's 0.81 and at x is equal to 2 y is equal to minus 0.81 and so on and so forth well we can also graph the same string for y versus time t keeping x constant in other words we can find the y position of a particular point x on the string at various times so let us try to find the position y of the point at x equal to say zero at various times so we are talking about this point here at x is equal to zero and what will be its y position at various times as the wave moves so the equation we'll get when we put x is equal to zero is y for x is equal to zero at various times t is equal to a cos minus omega t which we know is same as a cos omega t and if we expand this what you'll get is this equals a cos 2 pi t where small t is any time t upon the capital t which is the time period of the wave so again i have pre-calculated the y values for various time values and this is the table i got so you can see that particle at x is equal to zero has various y positions at various times t and the corresponding graph looks like this so all I've done is taken the y values at various times t uh, by substituting t values over here in this equation and calculating the y values and it's plotted on this graph over here. So I'll repeat this graph that is this one gives the y position of all particles on the string at a particular time t and we've taken t is equal to zero here. You can plot a similar graph for other time values as well. So you can plot y position of all particles at time t equal to one second or two second and so on. While this graph over here 
gives a y position of a point at various times and we've chosen the point at x equal to 0 to make this graph. So you can plot the same graph for other points on the string as well. So that brings us to another interesting part in this lesson, which is what about waves moving in the negative x direction? So till now we have considered all waves moving in positive x direction, but how would the equation look like if the direction of motion of the wave is in the negative x direction? Well, it will not be all that complicated. We can modify the earlier equations to describe waves traveling in negative direction of the x-axis. So the simple logic is to imagine y displacement of a point x1 at time t1 is say y1. The same displacement that is y1 will happen at the origin at time t equal to t1 plus x1 upon v because the time taken for this disturbance to reach the origin is this only. And once it reaches the origin, it will obviously have the same y1 displacement. Hence, if we substitute t1 plus x1 upon v for time, what we get is y x1 t1 is equal to a cos 2 pi f x1 upon v where v is the velocity of the wave plus t1 and we know this can also be written as equal to a cos 2 pi x upon lambda plus t upon t and i'm sorry this should be x1 this should be t1 which in turn is equal to a cos kx1 plus omega t1 and if you substitute x as a more general form of the equation in this equation we've just derived what you'll get is y x t is equal to a cos kx plus omega t so this is the equation of a wave moving in the negative x direction and the only difference you can see is that the negative sign which appears for a wave moving in the right direction or the positive x direction is substituted by a positive sign. So this expression in the wave equation is called the phase and we've learned about it earlier also. It is an angular quantity. Well, anything that attaches itself to a cos or a sign has to be an angular quantity only and here it is always measured in radians and this phase value for some x and t value determines the part of the sinusoidal wave that may be occurring at a particular point and time and probably that's the reason it's called the phase you may also like to note that all crests where y is equal to a cosine function has a value 1 the phase value therefore could be 0 2 pi 4 pi and so on because only multiples of 2 pi can give cos value of 1 and for a trough where y value is minus a cosine value has to be minus 1 and therefore the phase value needs to be pi 3 pi 5 pi and so on so if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos